Welcome to the next video in the mathematical logic sequence, talking about propositional logic and this time the ultrafilter theorem. So to state the theorem, it claims that every filter can be extended to an ultrafilter if it has this finite intersection property. That is to say, if you take any finite collection out of F and intersect them all, you get a non-empty set. Now the proof is going to use the compactness theorem that we proved, and as a lot of these applications of the compactness theorem go, we are going to somehow build a set of formulae that correspond to the object in question. So in particular here, we are going to take every subset of I and have it right, construct a corresponding propositional variable. In a sense, each variable is going to represent the assertion that the given set is in the filter. So we are now going to start constructing a set X of formulae such that, again, right, the, the sort of idea here is to build it in such a way that it kind of has this correspondence to the objects in our uh, of, of interest, right? In this case, the filter and, uh, and so on. So uh, if you take any two subsets from I, call them M and N, we will build formulae that basically enforce the conditions of an ultra filter. So the first one being that if you have, so, so we'll give it this first formula, right? This is a first formula, this biconditional formula and it essentially enforces that, you know, precisely the condition that we understand in the language of sets for being a filter. And then this other biconditional formula, we also enter this into the set X and this one enforces the ultra part for being an ultra filter. Moreover, for every element of the filter, we enter the formula corresponding to it so that in essence, this is declaring, you know, by, by PJ being in the set X, that is our way of declaring that J is in the filter in question. Okay, so a as I've been describing, we'll go ahead and take the collection of all of these formulae that we have just described above pack them into a set X, and then we want to show that X is satisfiable. That's where, in a moment, compactness is going to come in because we'll argue that X is satisfiable by showing that every finite subset of X is satisfiable. And then we'll use the model that satisfies X to help us to build the ultra filter. So, right, so we're kind of taking this loop, right? We start from filters, we go down into the world of the formulae that is saying stuff about them. We use compactness in this world of formulae, and at the end we use it to somehow translate back into the world of filters. Okay, so to start acting on the plan, we want to go ahead and grab any finite subset of uh, formulae in X, so we're going to call that X0, and in particular we're going to let these, as I have them on the slide, these particular atomic formulae be in uh, X not, be all of the atomic formulae in X naught. Of course, because X naught is finite, then this set must be finite. And of course, recall by the construction of this language, every formula is P sub and then some, right? Like those things are the subsets of I that uh, we had in the previous slide. So we can go ahead and now start talking about those sets, right? We know that those are subsets of I, and really the only way they could get there is if they were elements of the filter. So now we know that if we take those sets, intersect them, it must be non-empty. We go ahead and choose an arbitrary element, call it I sub zero. We then use I sub zero to generate an ultra filter and we are going to uh, then use that ultra filter to try to get a model which satisfies X sub naught. So keep in mind, we are still in the business of trying to prove that X naught is satisfiable. 
Okay, so somewhat predictably, we will go ahead and build a model W by saying that it assigns to an atomic formula one, if and only if its index, which after all, again, is a subset of I, so right, so the index of the formula is J, J is a subset of I, and so it makes sense to say that our assignment assigns it one if and only if that j is in u, which uh, we had from the previous slide. So now we need to argue that the model that we have constructed satisfies x naught. So let's start, right, this is gonna be a proof by induction. So let's show that that is true for all of the atomic formulae. So if you take an atomic formula out of X naught, right, we're trying to show that W satisfies it. Well, what do we know about this? The only way that that P sub J is in X naught is if J is equal to some one of those M sub I's. And that thing must contain I because after all, I or I sub naught because that was in the intersection of all the M's. And then because that, right, since I sub naught is in M sub I, that is what it takes to be in U by definition of U. And then because the, right, and because the set M sub I is in U, that is the condition for the model to assign PJ1. So we now know that the model satisfies PJ. Okay, now to move on to the other kinds of formulae that are in X naught, we've got two other kinds. And by the way, I described this as a proof by induction. It really isn't actually, now that I sort of think about it a little bit more. Really, I'm just saying, take any formula out of X naught it's one of these three kinds. And so this is really a proof by cases, right? We can show in each case for whichever kind of formula it is that the model satisfies the formula. So for formulae of these kinds, well, these are satisfied somewhat simply just because U is an ultrafilter, right? These basically just describe the properties of an ultrafilter, you know, right? Translating back and forth between the filters and the formulae. So just to give a demonstration of how this would go, suppose that we take something that is of the second kind, that is to say one of these things that express the, you know, exactly one of M or M complement is in the set turned into a corresponding formula. We can prove that that is always satisfied by basically two cases. The first case, and really the only case that I will consider explicitly, is where M is in U, right? So either M is in U or it is not. Let's assume that it is in. Well, then we know that P sub M, that formula, is satisfied by the model, by the construction of the model. U is an ultra filter, therefore its complement is not in U. Therefore, the assignment assigns the, co the sentence corresponding to the complement the value zero. And then that means that, let's go ahead and uh, sort of point this out, this gets evaluated as zero, this gets evaluated as one, therefore the negation is zero, and then the biconditional gets value one. So that is just a demonstration in that case of, of how we know that the assignment will satisfy that kind of a sentence. And I'll just point out that if we do the other assumption where rather than assuming that M is in U, we assume that M complement, or sorry, that M is not in U, it goes very, very similarly. And also for any sentence of this form, uh, you know, you'll run through a somewhat similar proof. So the previous conversation has now established that if X naught is any finite subset of X, then X naught is satisfiable. Therefore, X is satisfiable by the compactness theorem. Therefore, we let V be any model for X. We now use V to construct the ultra filter. So we're going to define this set U sub V as the set of all subsets of I such that the corresponding formula is satisfied by V. We'll now prove that U sub V is an ultra filter. The proof is really fast, so I'm actually only going to do a small part of the proof and suggest that the rest of it is, is handled very similarly without a lot of struggle. 
Uh, let's go ahead and show that it has this uh, closure under intersections property. So take any two elements of U sub V and then, uh, well, what does that mean? That means that they're subsets of I such that their corresponding formulae are satisfied. Therefore, the assignment satisfies the conjunction. Therefore, now this part is due to the fact that V satisfies X and recall X has that biconditional between P sub M intersect N and P sub M conjunction P sub N. So because X has that biconditional and we've now satisfied the conjunction side of that biconditional, therefore we must also satisfy the other side that has the intersection in it, right? So, that, so this move is due to what we know about the elements of X. Finally, this then tells us by definition that the intersection M intersect N is an element of this U sub V, and that shows the closure under intersections property. So to fully complete the proof, we would have to show that, right, because we know that there is this, right, that, that you don't have to just show closure under intersections and supersets, but in fact, there's a single equivalent condition where if any two sets are in the family, then their intersection is and conversely. So you could just walk this argument back and get that prop, that single condition that gives you that this is a filter. You would also want to prove that it's an ultra filter. The proof would go almost exactly the same sort of way. And then you would want to prove that F is a subset of this set. Again, that goes in almost the same kind of argument.